subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. Sometimes it feels like we hardly know much about Earth's closest companion, our own moon. We have theorized how the moon has come to be what it is today, how it started orbiting the Earth, how it cooled down from a blob of semi-molten rock to our solid neighbor who is in fact moving further and further away from us slowly. There is a lot that we do know about the moon and there is still some that we do not. In this video, we'll look at new findings thanks to samples that were retrieved from the moon by China's Chang'e 5 mission. And these samples show that there was lava flow a billion years after we thought it ended on the moon, suggesting that the moon likely cooled much later than we thought or that there is an entirely new explanation altogether for later volcanism on the moon. So what does that mean for how our theory of how the moon came to be and how it's evolving today? Back in 1898, the English astronomer and in fact son of Charles Darwin, George Darwin, proposed first that the Earth and the moon had been a single body in the past. He further calculated using simple Newtonian physics that the moon had orbited the Earth much closer in the past and is now slowly drifting away. This matched up with all the evidence that we had and all that we understood of physics. So it was widely accepted by the scientific community. And it is in fact correct according to what we understand of the evolution of the Earth Moon system even today. Our understanding of the formation and evolution of the moon is summed up by the widely accepted theory that a Mars sized body collided with what was then Earth about 4.5 billion years ago. This was around or a little less than about 100 million years after the Sun and the solar system formed. A body called Theia belonging to a group of Mars-sized bodies that existed during these early stages of the solar system formation 4.5 billion years ago collided with the Earth at an oblique angle. This proto-Earth back then had almost fully formed. The impact of two bodies the size of Earth and Mars would have partially melted the Earth and fully melted and vaporized the impactor or Theia. This is what we think actually happened and this is called the giant impact hypothesis. We think this is how the Earth-Moon system formed. Theia in Greek mythology is the mother of the goddess Selene, who is the goddess of moon. When Theia struck proto-earth, there would have been a mixing of all of the materials that make up these two bodies. Theia's iron core then sunk into the core of earth and Theia's molten mantle mixed with the molten mantle of earth and accreted into it. But the impact would have also caused ejecta or released debris into space and this debris and material would have orbited the earth for hundreds of years before eventually coalescing to form the moon. This theory supports many things that we understand about the earth-moon system. Both bodies spin in the same orientation, moon samples from the surface show that the rock was once fully molten Moon's core is actually much smaller than expected, which means that it would have lost a part of its core material. The moon does not have any volatile elements, which are usually the first to vaporize in high energy events. Some moon rock and earth rock have similar properties. And of course, such collisions have occurred in other systems too that we are aware of. The earth moon system is unique in our solar system. It is the only system with two large terrestrial, fully differentiated spherical bodies. If the moon had been orbiting the sun in its own clear orbit, it would have actually been defined as a planet. Differentiated bodies are those where the structure of a body is actually composed of matter that has separated and settled into different layers underneath because of the matter's physical properties. That means that the densest materials that make up the body sink to the center while the lightest rise to the surface. This basically means that differentiated bodies are ones that have a clear core and mantle and sometimes even a crust. 
The densest material is usually iron and that is why earth also has an iron nickel core. The moon too has an iron core. Both the earth and the moon have a solid inner core made of solid iron which is surrounded by a liquid outer core also made of iron. We used to think that the earth's core was only a single blob of molten iron but Danish seismologist Inga Lehmann realized that seismic waves did not match this theory. So she was the first to theorize and confirm that there was a solid inner core which was surrounded by a liquid outer core and this was back in 1936. These two core layers are surrounded by the mantle. On earth, the mantle is made up of molten rock and it contains magma. On the moon, this rock is solidified and both bodies also have a solid crust. When the American Apollo missions and the Soviet lunar missions visited the moon in the 60s and 70s, they brought back lunar rock samples, which dated to about either 1 billion years old or younger, or 3 billion years and older. Based on these rocks, we knew that there were volcanic eruptions on the moon going all the way back to 4 billion years and peaking at about 3.8 to 3 billion years ago. We think that volcanism on the moon stopped at some point after 3 billion years ago. China's Chang'e 5 mission, which is named for the Chinese goddess of the moon, Chang'e, landed on a different part of the moon than the Apollo and the Luna missions. This part of the moon is called the Oceanus Procellarum or the Ocean of Storms. It is also on the near side of the moon that faces the Earth. This site was chosen because the crust is thinner and the region hadn't been sampled before. Volcanism on the moon would have been similar to that on Earth. Magma under the surface would have been released as lava and the deposits cover a layer of the surface. And on the moon, these deposits are in the form of basaltic rock, which are darker in color. These patches of dark color are also visible to us from Earth and they are known as maria or seas. And Oceanus Procellarum is a 2,500 kilometer wide stretch from the north to the south of the moon and is very dark in color. This was China's first sample return mission and from this region it brought back 1.8 kilograms of rock. The analysis of this volcanic rock revealed that it was dated to about 1.96 billion years old which is surprisingly younger for volcanic rock. The rock shows that on the moon there was volcanism for at least a billion years after we thought that it had already ceased. This is the youngest evidence of lava flow that is dated on the moon. When there's volcanism anywhere, the lava covers existing surface ground and it solidifies to go on and become the new surface. In this process, if there are any craters on the surface, the lava covers these craters. On astronomical bodies, these craters are specifically impact craters that are formed by impacts from other bodies in space like asteroids. Impact craters are not visible if new lava has covered it. We use this logic to determine the age of a planet's surface, not the planet itself, but its surface. So we determine how long the planet had been volcanically active. This method is called crater counting and we can then use radiometric dating of samples to confirm the age. We can also then compare craters on different bodies like those on the moon and Mars to compare what we know about bombardment in space and volcanism on other planets. Using this method, we've dated lunar samples to older than 3 billion years and younger than 1 billion years of age. This new data from Chang'e 5 fills in this gap. What is completely perplexing is that we do not understand how there could have been volcanism at this point in time when Oceanus Procellarum was forming because by then the moon had cooled down significantly and there wasn't enough heat to generate magma. But that's by our current understanding of what drove magma formation on the moon. There are other theories. One is that residual radioactive elements like uranium, thorium and potassium inside the moon provided the heat for volcanism, but there is no evidence of such elements. Another theory is that the tidal pull of Earth's gravity gave the moon internal heat. We actually see this happening even today elsewhere, especially around Jupiter. 
on the moon io there is constant volcanism because of tidal forces which is basically that the moon is being flexed and pulled in all directions by gravitationally strong bodies around it which is jupiter and the other large moons so this heats up the insides of the moon and keeps it volcanically active maybe that's what happened on our moon due to earth's gravity because we know that the moon formed significantly closer to earth this could have strengthened the tidal forces from earth but there is still the mystery of why the lava flow occurred only in a localized region like oceanus procellarum and not the entire surface in short we are not yet sure how to explain the new findings as our understanding of the moon now continues to evolve we might even discover younger areas maybe within just a few tens of millions of years old more findings and dating of volcanic rock on the moon can even give us improbable results like volcanism being detected just tens of millions of years ago which we firmly believe did not happen and if evidence shows that it did then we throw our existing explanations for how the moon evolved out the window and find a new theory as we do every day in science